This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Cowherd and Jason Whitlock. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. It's Monday. Cowherd's back. March Madness is here. Get excited. Cowherd says he's more concerned with the Warriors' recent struggles than the Cavs because the Cavs have a true identity. Do, do I need to remind Cowherd that Kevin Durant is coming back in 20 games? And guess what? Here's the stat that nobody's talking about about these Warriors. The last 13 days, eight games, three sets of back-to-backs. Three in two weeks. That Of course they're going to struggle. Anybody would, especially without Durant. Whitlock takes a stab at Northern California. The Bay Area is to blame for Andre Iguodala's racial comments. Fox basketball analyst Chris Broussard is here for a little March Madness preview. We talk a little Coach Cal, a little Bill Self. It's all deadly. Plus, we talk about Tony Romo's future. And if it involves a request from the president of the network to be on the Speak for Yourself panel. (laughs) And finally, the Patriots added Brandon Cooks. Everybody wants to hand them the Super Bowl. I'm going to pump the brakes. Greg Jennings going to firmly disagree with me. Ready for Speak for Yourself? Coward and Whitlock, take it away. Welcome to the show. Colin thinks John Calipari might be in for a rude awakening. And Jason thinks Tony Romo should retire now. Really, Speak for Yourself starts now. March Madness just around the corner. Up for grabs. Whenever that's the case, take Duke. (laughs) All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard and Super Bowl champion Eric Davis. Let's start in Houston where James Harden's triple-double took down LeBron and the Cavs last night. Cleveland has now dropped five of seven, but they're not the only ones struggling. The Kevin Durantless Warriors have also lost five of seven, including three in a row. Colin, who are you more concerned about, the Cavs or the Warriors? Oh, I think the Warriors are in trouble. I think even their jokes fall flat. Uh, We'll talk about that in five (laughs) minutes. Um, I think they're a team. You called them a suburb team years ago. Yeah. I think they're soft, and I think you're seeing it. I think you can get in their head. I think you can push them around. They got rid of their size in their bench. Steph Curry left to his own now without Kevin Durant. Look at what is what looks what's happening. I I find them to be. I used to always use the term the Mike Tyson quality. Bullies are great until you punch them in the mouth, or when they face crisis. When Golden State faces a little heat or a crisis, last year's finals, now losing Kevin Durant. What's their identity? What oh, is their last identity? Last year, Western Conference Finals, that was crisis. Down 3-1, you just had this record-breaking season. They responded. What, what do you make of this? Well, I, look, to answer the question, I'm more concerned about the Warriors, too, mainly because Cleveland's in the East, and there's just simply nobody that I think can compete with them. If I look at the teams that I think could beat or give Cleveland a good series, Houston, if we're generous, Golden State, Washington's San Antonio. Washington's got the best record since January 1. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. Miami's they, mo- they Miami's, Miami's playing Miami's very not even well. in the playoffs They're yet. Move Let's get them in the playoffs. Playing very well. Here you go on that Miami Listen, tip again. But it was Warriors, the Warriors, can we get them in the postseason first? The Warriors have a solution coming back in Kevin Durant. Not at 100%. He will be back. The playoffs last forever. It's seven-game series. The Warriors have a solution coming back. So you're more concerned what, about Cleveland. Yes. What is the solution for Cleveland again? LeBron, right yeah, there. LeBron, Agreed. Provi- but again, LeBron can be moody and emotional. If things turn a little adverse, I've seen LeBron and the Cavaliers. The Cavs struggle. issue, wow. the Cavs yeah. issue feels like apathy. Yes, it, that's what it feels like. They are like, absolutely looking at the standings, like thinking the Wizards are number two. <laughs> tastes like chicken. Yeah, the Wizards <laughs> are gonna beat Cleveland no. in a series. Hey Come man, on. all of these teams are—they are a sum of their parts, correct? And you look at the way the, the Cavaliers. I'm, I'm less. I'm more concerned about the Warriors because you see what's happening right now. You, the Warriors decided they were gonna go all in with Durant. By doing so, you had to get rid of, and you say it all the time, Colin, you had to, you had to get rid of a lot oh, of the Andrew parts. Oh, Bogan, oh, my God. Oh, well, well, well no, but, oh, are you, but do you think they made a mistake? But no, but now, but now what's happening with Durant, not, with Durant not being there, and now you see all of the other guys trying to figure out how to pick up those pieces, and I, and I think it's a chemistry issue right yes, now. Yes, so do I. So, because you got Steph trying to take those shots, and he's off, and what's happening with him trying to get his shot back, he's taking more of those shots, you lose Durant's points, it, it, it magnifies everyone not playing as well as they were playing before. This is why child actors fail too much too soon. Golden State, generally we see things build. 
Golden State, we all woke up one morning and went, holy God, they took over the league. It's not the way it worked for Michael. It's not the way it worked. So they become this red-hot comet. They win a championship. We all say they're going to win nine. Then last we year, did. well, there was an assumption like the Seahawks. They, and they had went, a bit of a climb. It wasn't they like did. they came out of nowhere. It Mark was Jackson. 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 Yeah, Brandon but I mean, Mark they Jackson. went from 51 wins to best team ever in league history in about a one-and-a-half-year span. Now they've got no bench. They lack physicality. Not a great rim protector. I don't buy into JaVale McGee in the playoffs. And I look at this team, and I'm like, what's their identity? It's technical. Well, their, from, their identity is to shoot the long ball and score more than you yeah. score. And a lot of the now, leagues wonder, caught up to that. they play good defense, and, and I, But without Durant not being there, you see that they lost their size. There, wasn't a problem. Well, because That's Durant is still long We're enough. You don't think about it. looking at them without Durant. Yeah. You have to remember, he will be back. Now, he may not be 100%. I, that's why I'm more concerned about them, but I'm not writing them off. It sounds like you're writing them off. No, I, I said when Durant got hurt, I said, okay, you do realize they will not be the number one team, seed in the West. Th and I said, that was a hot take. And I said, they're not winning the West. The West is... Uh, is and that's easy to say once Durant went down. They were the earliest team yeah. to ever clinch a playoff spot this year. Things were going well with their super but team. But this is what... Durant got hurt. But the regular He's season is not the playoffs. The playoffs is a more physical game. And as the playoffs escalate, the conference finals are more physical. The finals are more physical. This team, to me, with an 80% Durant, no bench, lacks some girth, I, Who's beat him? Because remember, but Marcus Aldridge is in uncertainty at this point. Well, this so if he, thing, what this, if he doesn't come back? San Antonio's the proven the they can season, win without stars. And, th and that's what I was just about to go at. What, this, what the regular season has shown, forget the playoffs, what the regular season has shown me, I don't think this team can win without its stars. They have four guys that they are depending on, and I don't know if you lose one of those guys, if they're going to be able to make it up because they don't have the right role players anymore. That's right. And they had that before. Golden State, That's their issue. You, the Spurs are a little like the Patriots. We've seen them win a Super Bowl without Gronk. It's a system. Golden State system is like Kentucky basketball. It's their players. And when they lose a big player, they don't exactly. have the capability to win. act like he's not coming back. They didn't bury. 70%, no, 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 80%. That. I'm, not, I'm not even saying that. I'm saying what, what is, this is showing me. I think if you lose another one of those four, it's going to affect them in the same way. Well, yeah, you well, lose half your team. All right, welcome back. Eric Davis is back with us. Joining us now is Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. Let's move to Dallas, where the Cowboys may not have gotten any trade offers for Tony Romo, but the QB did get an offer of a different kind. Reportedly, Romo has a job right here to replace Colin Cowherd on this <laughs> show if he wants it. Uh, filling the vacancy, no, he has a, a shot at John Lynch's old game broadcasting job. Colin, should Romo retire to pursue a career in broadcasting? No, I mean, I, I don't understand why we're always rushing people to quit stuff they love to do. Like, if you if you write movies, then write them to your grave. Like, I mean, if I could play football for a living and be a quarterback in the NFL, <laughs> I mean, be one thing it's a left guard and I'm pulling and I'm old <laughs> and I've had no, Mark Schlereth's had 38 knee surgeries. What if you got hurt every time I did that? Well, that's not exactly... <laughs> the, <laughs> Uh, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> well, first well, of all, I've, I've always loved Romo more than the national narrative. I, I, I think we judge athletes too much on championships. If you can play any professional sport for 10 years, to me it is unbelievably remarkable. If you can play at a high level like you guys did, it's just incredible. This whole championship thing with Tony Romo is ridiculous. You can't win this stuff by yourself. How, how many rings Justin Verlander no, had? No, 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 no. no. So, but, but my point is, why would you quit playing football if you're really good at it and you can make a bunch riddle. of money? And listen, because he's brittle, and because right now I think Tony Romo's finding out his value, his perception around the league. No, Houston and Denver allegedly both want him. Neither one of them are willing to give up a six-round pick to get him. The the word no, they don't have to. Well, I get, some if if there's two teams and he's only going to go to one, somebody would guarantee that they could get him by giving up something. But you don't have to give up anything because you still have some, a shot. I, I get what you're saying, but just wait. They're going to release him, and you just wait and take your shot then. Again, if if someone thought he could play 16 games in a full playoff, they'd offer up a six round I think pick they for think, him. I I I think everybody thinks he can. But here's the problem. Then they give up a pick for Well, it, it's, it's to different. To guarantee they got Belichick it. and Elway can take Romo. He gets hurt the first hit, and they don't get fired. This is the thing with Romo. It's almost, this is the way the world works. You have more leverage the more success you have. Joe Montana throws picks. They go into the ether. 
You know what I mean? Tony Romo throws a pick. He's a bad quarterback. Belichick and Elway can whiff on this totally. So they can go for it here. If that guy in Houston takes Romo and he gets, he's already on the chopping block because of that Osweiler contract. Yes, we've had this discussion, and that, that's how I feel about it. So, okay, number one, no. I don't think he should stop playing football to pursue a broadcasting career. I truly believe this is what's going on, though. What we, what we see is a guy who was hoping that he was going to attract more attention and get more pump in teams wanting to come after him. That has not happened. True. Has not happened. And when you're in this situation... But Greg, when you say a guy, is, is the guy Jerry Jones or is the guy Tony Romo? The that... guy is Tony Romo. Okay. When, you, when you're in this situation, and we saw the video that he released... He knows something, so he knows he's not going to be back in Dallas. Yes. But when you're sitting at home, when you're training and you're Tony Romo, and you don't have that phone ringing every day, you start to question, you know what, why am I doing this anymore? Should I continue to move on? I think he has a future in broadcasting, but I think, I agree with you, as long as you can continue to play, play. But when that phone isn't ringing, and you're a $19 million hit right now, if someone wanted to just say, you know what, we'll take him, nobody's going to do that. No one will do that. And I don't think that he's in a position right now to say, you know what, I'm just going to walk away because he still wants to, he still believes he can do it because yeah. he, he wants to prove everyone wrong. Well, we well, want that, you, Tony. But no, but this is the thing, see, we're, you're sitting here Eric assuming... Eric Shanks wants you. Well, I, and I'm... And, I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I think Tony is a good quarterback who has taken a lot of hits because of not winning the championships as well. But now, Tony is not in position right now to where they can call him, to where they can take him, to can, where they can really say, we love you. Because you and I both know as players, the way you really show me that you love me is to actually a give me, give, show me the money. Absolutely. So, now, so right now, when Tony is out there, yes, there, there are a lot of, there's no reason to give up. It's just bad business yes, to give is. up anything. There's only one team no. that's going to get him, and there's two teams competing for him. One of them should ante up and pay for him, and, just and, like and, Eric Shanks is trying to. All right, welcome back. Greg Jennings and Jason McIntyre are back with us. Let's move to New England, where the Super Bowl champion Patriots have made a number of big moves this offseason, including giving Tom Brady a new weapon by trading for speedy receiver Brandon Cooks. Meanwhile, paid former Patriot Martellus Bennett signed with the Packers, who are trying to answer Aaron Rodgers' call for more activity during free agency. Colin, who benefits more from these moves, Brady or Rodgers? Well, I think it's, I think New England's system's better. And so I think players, you know, all players in this league need a system. You know, there's very few Randy Mosses that are just absurd. And I think New England has the best system in the league, and they know exactly what fits their system. And I think all these guys are going to work very well. I think the signal I got from this move is that New England's like, fellas, we're going for it. And he feels like he's got Brady for one more year. They did this last offseason. They get Chris Long. They get Martellus Bennett. They get the receiver from Buffalo, Hogan. I think what they're basically telling you in New England is, we think we got one to two more years of Tom, and we're going to go for 18-0. They're playing with house money. They just won a Super Bowl. And, yeah, they can go all in on the ultimate greatness, 18-0. Uh, it's hard for me to say Aaron Rodgers, and, and I like this Martellus Bennett move, but... At the same time, T.J. Lang, they just lost an offensive lineman to the Detroit Lions. You got to be upright to get the ball down is to is uh, Martellus, Martellus Bennett. I mean, I like Martellus Bennett because I think he, I like him because he's smart and funny. I think I know what you're about to say. <laughs> but with Martellus, I always feel like he's kind of a one-year guy. I think what New England just acquired is a three-year star. Yeah, yeah. So for me, who benefits more, hands down, is New England Patriots and Tom Brady, and. If you're anywhere on that schedule with New England next year, you're looking like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you, are you going to help this guy even more? But this is what makes this team so special and so great. They do things that other teams are unwilling to do. They think outside the box. They are thinking before making decisions, and, and they are always in front of the eight ball, as I alluded to earlier on Undisputed instead of being behind the eight ball. When I look at what the Packers did in acquiring Martellus Bennett and losing Jared Cook 
I, that's pretty much a, I honestly a wash. It's a wash. No, it, it it's a like Green Bay made the move not to lose ground. Yeah. New England made the move to, to get, get better. Absolutely. Let, me, got a great let point. me push back a little bit. I know 16 and 0 sounds good, but Brandon Cooks is going to be a free agent after next season. He's a young guy. It's one thing to get Chris Long and these older guys for one year. Brandon Cooks is a young guy looking for a big payday. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Patriot system, Colin. You got Hogan, Edelman, Amendola. All those guys are going to want their balls, right? Gronk, Gronk's going to want his catches. How are you going to spread it around and keep Brandon Cooks happy? Is there potential division in the locker room? Edelman and Amendola also free agents in 2018. Amendola now got, is done. Well, Edelman, you got, you got, you. I'm saying you've got you. a bunch of receivers, a lot of talent. And let them all go. Uh, what? So because Bill Belichick always pays free agents, no. he loves Have to pony up a lot of money. Cook. Have you not watched what they are willing to do with marquee players? They don't care. They don't care. They don't. They will replace. They will let you walk out the front door with everyone staring at you. His point, though, is though, is Brandon Cooks a potential disruptor? In terms no. of Patriots have always been about the team and the system. Brandon Cooks might come. I want to get paid, and I need I 90 need catches, 100 uh, catches to do Understand this. If you can acquire a Randy Moss and keep him under wraps because of winning... Didn't win winning, a Super Bowl with Moss. It doesn't matter. Moss it made a bunch of money by it, the time he got point, to New England. But he wanted, to win. he wanted a chance to win the Lombardi Trophy. On Friday, Andre Iguodala was asked about Steve Kerr's plans to rest his starter for Saturday's game at San Antonio. His response provoked some controversy and a $10,000 fine today by the NBA. They want dumb so I'm gonna get y'all dumb Anything else? Yeah. Um, what would dumb say? Um, just play harder, figure it out. Change is gonna come. Ain't that what we should say? Yeah. Change is gonna come. Was it planned that you, were, you guys would take tomorrow off? Planned we taking tomorrow off? You, Steph, Dre, and, and uh, Clay. Oh, uh, no, no clue. Do what Master say. All right, Steve Kerr downplayed the comment, saying, quote, he likes to stir the pot. You guys got Andre. Andre is extremely intelligent. He sees uh, a, a lot of hypocrisy in the world. He said uh, what he said, and I don't think it meant a whole lot. Jason, what's your reaction to Andre's comments? Well, I'm glad the NBA find him uh, because I think the comments are irresponsible. I think they're uneducated. I, I know allegedly he was trying to troll or whatever. This was just stupid and inappropriate. I think the NBA should have found him more and taken a stronger stance. I think 10,000 is a slap on the wrist. But, but I want to just cut a, a layer deeper and just say, it doesn't surprise me this is going on with Golden State. This is Silicon Valley. And that environment in the San Francisco area, hyper-political, hyper-progressive. Steve Kerr is making comments about politics. Steph Curry making comments about Under Armour and politics. Uh, Colin Kaepernick with the San Francisco 49ers. So him to make these insensitive or stupid racial comments doesn't surprise me. He's in an environment that eggs this on. You know, it is interesting. I've always loved the NBA, and I defended Kaepernick. But I think any business has to be careful that to give any employee base too much power. Like, the NBA's always been a player's league. Always has. I mean, I, that was 70s, 80s. That's fine. It's, it's fair that one of these leagues is a player's league. But we are in a different time. So players now, it's not only a player's league. But what I'm finding with the NBA is it is getting highly political. Like, it's when I think of Golden State, even the way Mark Jackson was ousted, he was a conservative Christian, it didn't fit the ownership. Like, I'm getting to the point with Golden State where when I think of this team, politics is one of the things I think about. And that's great, but New England doesn't talk about politics. UConn women doesn't talk about politics. Alabama doesn't talk about it. Um, the St. Louis Cardinals don't. This is great, and I know the progressives love it, and social media adores this stuff. But I just wonder, has the league given the players now too much power where they're now... Multiple players on a TV game will say, we're just not... We're not going to play. Uh, did you see that Saturday thing on ESPN? Yeah. That was embarrassing for the league. And that should be interesting what Adam Silver does. Because I know ABC and ESPN were like, Furious. look. The billions that we paid you and we get a bunch of second stringers, 
You know, so I, I, I'm with you there. That's too much power. And it's not the players really wanting to sit. It's the coaches. But in this, in this instance we're talking about, I'm glad the NBA fined him as well. $10,000 was not a slap on the wrist. That was a love tap on the wrist. He makes more than $11 million a year. Yep. I mean, that shows you the conflict that Adam Silver must have had. Like, wow, should I really do it? That's nothing. We'll $10,000. $10, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think, ideally, it'll deter players from using the N-word and stuff like that in interviews. What, what bothered me, his use of the N-word in a public setting like that, but also... He said that it's an inside joke in our locker room. We refer to somebody as master, whether it's Adam Silver in the NBA power structure or Steve Kerr. I'm upset or bothered that black men making millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases, are referring, even jokingly, to white men or a white man as master. That shows a slave mentality. We got to get way past that. That's disrespectful to our ancestors who were slaves. And it's disrespectful to us because we need to think of ourselves as free men in every way and sense of the word. Uh, looking at this, um, you can't ask the players. And this right here, I don't know what the question was. I would love to know what was being asked near him, what was being asked before this, before he went off into this. Because that's the part of it I don't, I don't get. Um, why did this turn into a, a massive situation? Why did this turn it. into an N-word situation? That, so that's what I'm saying. So what, so what was the joke? What was going on? And that, that's the part of it I would like to know. Uh, the league comes in, and if they decide to find them, if they had something in their ball law saying that you don't do this and we're going to find you, oh, oh, find you okay, $10,000, I'm with you guys. You know, if you're working, if you're working at the checkout stand, that's a whole <laughs> lot of money. If you're playing in the NBA, that's almost like saying you know what, because of the way it looks that we're going to do something. So those, those are the things that yeah. get me when, whenever we do all of these things because we're talking about things that are just insensitive and how is it taken, how is it viewed, and how is it within that group of people. I don't get so bothered by what these guys are saying and what they're doing because you have, as an organization, given them the right to do what they want to do oh, no and question. say what they want to say. And this is what happens when you get these guys that are these young millionaires that have, that have the ability and, and have that money to where if you're really mad at me, I don't care because I can pay for everything, like they're the going to do it. And that's a part of it. I think it's almost as if the NBA has in, is almost encouraging yeah. political talk. It, has. it feels like it. Despite not earning a top seed, Vegas has Coach K's squad as the favorite to win the tournament. Colin, the Blue Devils have had an up and down year. Are you surprised they're the favorites to win it all? No, they have three NBA players and the best coach, and they have a history of being very good in these tournaments. I mean, I think. Uh, and the best officiating crew. Oh, oh God. Ooh. I mean, oh, you know what? Had to go. Th this is classic, though. <laughs> this they have the best officiating crew. Uh, you know, here's what's funny. <laughs> they do get help. Though. Oh, they get help all the time. Yeah. That's why they're Vegas' favorite to win. Yeah. Yet a number two seed. So the, so clearly There's Vegas. No difference between a one and a two seed. Look at Gonzaga. Who would you? Who they should be number? Up. Who should be favored? Then? Well, listen, I don't have a problem with Duke being favored. I don't have a, any of these teams can be favored. College basketball. There's so much parity now. There's about 15 teams that could win this thing. You got to pick somebody. And so people are betting on Duke because they recognize. But are you Coach a, K. are you a Duke resenter? Yeah, I resent Duke what, a little what, bit. What, yeah. Why? Because of the when you say Duke, don't you think? Because the refs oh, always God. seem to conveniently help Duke out, and that bothers me. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you're going to tell One me... One of my best friends is a Duke grad, and he bothers me. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't He's like best Duke. Friend. So Duke, Duke gets all these five-star guys. They have a tremendous coach. They have a great operational staff. It's really... It, it's the Mercedes-Benz of college basketball coaches. Why don't they win every year, then? If the NCAA is helping him. What do you mean? Coach K's won like as many five. titles, five titles. He's he been did. coaching for 30 years. Five titles is a lot, Colin. Yeah, do you know how and hard it is to win six straight in March? I mean, come on, that's a that's much more no, challenging. I, I don't, I don't than think when Nick it is. Saban goes through in college. I don't football. think it is anymore. I think it used to be harder. Really? Oh, really? With Duke's got VCU? three anything can happen. Duke's what? got three NBA players, but nobody a lot else of teams do. Kentucky, they okay. got a few. But what I'm saying is, about five teams in college basketball now. Carolina, Duke, UCLA. Kentucky, have about three NBA players. They're all in different regions. They should absolutely get to the Final Four every year if the officials absolutely. are helping them. Absolutely. 
I, wow. I would, they, you guys, this is not the 70s. We're, we're in college basketball where Butler with Gordon Hayward yeah. went to back-to-back -back Final Four. And who did they face? Brad Stevens. Duke, because Duke didn't face any NBA guys on the way to the Final Four. Duke, if Duke has is, is got the officials in the NCAA helping him, they should win this Listen, thing every other year. Look, I don't want to go all conspiracy theory, but look, Duke is good for Raiden. Never forget that. People show up to watch Duke because either people love him or hate him. And so a lot of times when I watch Duke in this tournament, yeah, I think they get a little help. Cal Again, who knows if it's intentional? Who, who knows what it is? But something about the tournament, somehow the officiating always seems to just favor Duke a little Do too much. Do you believe that? I think we need an investigation into this. I mean, this, oh, this is very... Yeah, uh, now, I'm listen, sure against Baylor a few years ago, there was a suspicious call, but that's one game, Whitlock. I mean, you think they hey, got help in the ACC tournament? I, no. They don't no, need no, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, <laughs> I listen. Mean, I, they, I don't they're they're go... The reason they're favored is because they got hot at the right time. Yeah. We saw it with UConn a few years ago. When you get hot heading into the tournament, People feel like you got a great chance to win it, coupled with the fact that they were the preseason pre favorite. Preseason number one. They got Jason Tatum really coming into his own. I mean, they've got a, maybe the most talented team in the league in the, in the uh, tournament. The problem is this. They don't have a point guard. And point guards are huge in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Grayson Allen that can could play be both. Their Your guy, downfall. who you don't Listen, even want I, in college well, basketball. Now Grayson he's Allen, already, he learned his lesson, apparently. I think <laughs> what you think, though, and, and I really believe this, I believe that a lot from gamblers to casual right. fans, they believe what Jason believes. That they're, because Duke is a different brand. In my life, there's only been two of these. Notre Dame in the 70s, 80s, and then Duke now. That when you say Duke, you don't just think basketball. If I say Kansas basketball, I just think of hoops. I say Duke, I think of Officials. privilege, smart. What's uh, privilege? Officiating. That's why you think of privilege. Because no, I think of it as a smart, uh, elevated, American Express, yeah. Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. American Express, to me, isn't just a credit Correct. card. It's global travel. It's higher end. I want to be crystal clear here because of people, Duke people's heads are exploding. Coach K is awesome. They have awesome players. If I had a kid that was a basketball player, I'd probably send him to Duke. Oh. So I just want to be clear. From Christian Leitner to Grand Hill, all are great. But do, in my opinion, do I think sometimes the officials get out there and oh, be like, God. I like Duke too. Oh. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I think that happened. This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Coward and Jason Whitlock. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. Make sure and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes if you haven't already. It's also on SoundCloud. It's on YouTube. We're on Fox Sports Radio. We are everywhere. And we know you're hearing us. We love it. Thank you for the reaction, the comments, the Facebook likes. All that good stuff. Hey, and thanks for the props and the negative comments about my Facebook Live on the NCAA tournament. I go giddy for the brackets. I go on Cowherd Show, talk brackets, and my Twitter feed just blows up for two hours. People angry at me for comments I made. Dude, uh, it's the tournament. It's 10 days in March. If you can't get excited for the tournament and have fun and really sink your teeth into it, I, I don't know how you call yourself a sports fan. Talk to you guys tomorrow.